Hi, in this continuation of my Sub-D sports car demo, uh, I'm going to continue by uh, merging these various surfaces together and then controlling the surface transitions. So uh, in, the, in the first session, in the previous video, I, I set up the main surfaces of the vehicle as separate volumes with these really nice controlled gaps between each of the volumes in order to define what, what, I, what kind of a surface transition I wanted. Um, as you can see, the surfaces are quite soft at the moment. They're not quite meeting up with the curves that I set up, but um, you know, really I was just using the curves as a reference. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna take my sketch and I'm gonna make it a little bit more transparent. So you can really see the surfaces. I'm also going to do a quick highlight check by using our custom HDRs, specifically the zebra stripe. So with the zebra stripe, I can, I can check one more time and see if there's any major issues with surface uh, topology, highlights, reflections, thing, that, things of that nature. So for example, I've got this little hole here. I can, I can bring that point out a little bit and, and correct that. Um, and that's, that's, really, uh, that's really about it. So uh, I'm going to go back to um, the regular HDR so I can just, just kind of see a nice smooth surface. I also have the uh, skyline environment. That's a nice way to, to check highlights as well as you're working. So, uh, so what I'm going to do is first I'm going to select one of the objects, go into edit mode, and then I'm going to use my... my uh, hammer and brush button here. These are my uh, additional tools that I have for Sub-D. And I have what's called the Merge Tool. With the Merge Tool activated, I can just click on the other bodies and link them together into a single editable object. Now I'm going to do that with just the body color elements because I want a, the glass to remain separate. So now I can start to join and weld points together. So what I'm going to do is go back to uh, polygonal view. You can see where I've really been able to control those um, those transitions. And I've also had I also have a nice strategic placement of points and edges so that when I do start to join things together, they they join together in a very logical way. And so so what I'm going to do now is start to I could either just weld the points together like that, or preferably I'm going to bridge them. So I'm just going to extrude another surface out, connect it together. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to define the, the, the radius or the fillet that is between those two elements. So I'm just going to continue bridging everything. So when I, now when I go to smooth view, you'll see I have a nice controlled transition between those, those elements. So if I, if I turn my zebra stripes back on, you'll see there's a nice tight controlled transition. Now it's not perfect, it needs a little bit of work, but I can just start pushing and folding a few points and very quickly it's gonna end up uh, right where I want it to be. So I'm going to do the same on the front. Just bridge between those main elements. And now I have a nice control transition. Now if I want, I can I have the structure in place where I can start to give certain shapes uh, tighter or softer edges. So for example, these these rear fenders, I can, I can just tighten them up by bringing the edge loops really close together and just by strategically adding additional edge loops, I can give it a lot more tension and, and precision. So now if I go into my zebra stripes, you'll see I have a nice tight controlled 
system of surfaces with good logic, good topology. I can, I can make them softer or tighter just by, by moving control points closer together or further apart. And I'm starting to have a very, very nice dynamic shape. So from there, I can start to build some, some uh, small wheel flats just by extruding out and shrinking the edge. So now I have some nice wheel flats. Add a couple of extra edge loops to crisp in the edge. And the same back here. Just uh, extrude and shrink. Adjust. And add a couple of extra edge loops. Going back to my going back to my uh, skyline HDR, have a nice control wheel flats. So that concludes our lesson on sub D modeling. In the next session, we'll go into details and other uh, other tips and tricks in order to get a much more realistic model. So thanks for watching.